working with selections. Sometimes when you work with focal point, you'll have a subject that has a very complex shape or a feathered edge, like these two monks in this scene. We want to make sure that we can protect them and keep them in focus while we blur the area behind them. Now we could use this with the masking brush inside a focal point, but it would take a long time. Instead, we're going to use a selection from Photoshop. You can use any of the selection tools that Photoshop offers, or even a masking tool like Mask Pro, to create a selection. The area that you have selected will be the only area that gets blurred. For this example, I'm just going to use the Quick Select tool from Photoshop. To use it, select the Quick Select tool, and then go ahead and just start to paint in your subjects. I'm going to zoom in, make this a little easier to see what's going on. All you do is just start to paint your subject. Just continue to add to the selection, and as long as you have the Auto Enhance option turned on, it'll automatically enhance the edge and make sure that it gets just the right part of the image that you want. Let's move over and work on the other monk now. You can see how I can just brush through it, and the Quick Select tool automatically picks our subject for us. You can fine tune it by using the plus and minus brushes as well. In this case, we got a little bit more than we wanted here on the side, so I'm just going to use the minus brush to brush through the areas that I want to protect. And you can spend as much time as is needed to make sure you get these selections refined to be just the area that you want. Once you get your selection of your subject made, go ahead and open up Focal Point 2. When you open Focal Point 2, let's go ahead and scroll down to the Focus Brush Pane. Make sure that the Use Selection as a Mask is enabled. And if you selected your subject rather than the background, be sure to check the Invert Selection option. There we go. You can see by inverting the selection, we're able to protect the monks and blur everything but that. And if we actually look at the mask, you'll be able to see the selection from Photoshop being protected. Now in this image, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a planar focus bug. And we're going to position it horizontally right under the feet of the monks. There we go. You can see how we're starting to create a nice depth of field look. We're keeping the foreground area sharp, letting the background go out of focus. There we go. Let's pick a lens preset. Again, I'm going to use a Canon 35mm 1.4 at 1.4. Alright, that's looking pretty good. It's a little strong on the blur, so maybe let's decrease that back just a little bit. And to have this look realistic, the columns on the left and the right in the foreground area parallel to the feet of the monks would be sharp as well. So let's go ahead and add a couple more focus bugs to do that. I'm just going to press the new focus bug icon, which creates a new focus bug. We can see it's this round one right here. I'm going to change that from round to planar, and I'm going to move it over here to the left-hand edge of my scene. And I'm just going to change the shape so that I can control where the depth of field falls off. There we go. Let's do the same thing on the other side. We'll add another focus bug. We're going to change it to planar, and we're going to put it on the right-hand side and then adjust its size in just a little bit as well. All right, there we go. By using a selection from Photoshop, we're able to maintain complete sharpness of a complex subject. And then by using multiple focus bugs together, we were able to create a realistic change in depth of field, minimizing some distractions. In the next movie, we're going to talk about how to use some of the options and vignette controls, and we're going to continue on where we left off on this image.